five minutes until our first wave of curbside customers arrive. Dinner time rush looks a little different for partners Erling Wu Bauer and Josh Tilden. What was once a night out is just a drive by. We're calling it family meal. They're relaunching their trendy Chicago restaurant, Pacific Standard Time, as takeout only. Their goal? To sell 200 meals. It's a, a salad, a vegetable, a protein, and a dessert. And that's $55 and it feeds a family of three or four. And you drive by a server from the restaurant, comes out in gloves, and they just drop it in your trunk and you drive away. It's an ambitious and risky venture for the restaurant that previously prided itself on being a place to go for laid-back, dine-in, shared plates. What keeps you up at night? Where do I start? Uh, the employees are number one, for sure. How to bring them back. The other thing that keeps me up recently is just like how to restart. That's the question facing so many across the country right now as states navigate how best to get back to work. Now more than two-thirds of the nation's governors are allowing business in some form to open back up. Restaurants crippled by the crisis, by some estimates, losing over $225 billion due to the pandemic. The National Restaurant Association estimating 8 million layoffs. Two-thirds of all the jobs lost in March were in food service. We're on life support right now. While the stimulus packages have included relief for restaurants, there was a sharp outcry that big chains were benefiting over moms and pops. Nice to see you. Now, as some states allow dine-in customers, it's with capacity restrictions. We take you inside the effort to reopen and reinvent. From the small businesses battling to hold on to the beloved southern chain that's an economic bellwether. Thank you, ma'am. And the workers impacted the most. I could never imagine that come May, I still wouldn't be working. We're opening up a completely different restaurant with very, very limited resources and huge unknowns. Since opening in 2018, Pacific Standard Time has garnered a lot of fanfare. The 8,200 square foot eatery has an open kitchen floor plan, complete with wood fire burning ovens. People were, were breaking bread together and, and sharing food and, and really feeling like a family and a community. When the pandemic hit, what did that do to your business? Right before we got the shelter in place uh, orders, I, I think we were down uh, I would say maybe 60 or 70 percent um, that last weekend that we operated. We had about 90 uh, full-time and part-time employees at the time, um, and we furloughed all but eight. So did you apply for any of the stimulus money? Yes, we, we did apply for uh, the PPP loan. It's very, very murky. After closing for more than six weeks, food is back in the kitchen. Hey, Ben, what are you doing? Cut bacon. But some items are things not on the menu, like masks and temperature checks. We've got a timer going off every 30 minutes, and everybody makes a beeline to the hand sinks. So of your 90 employees, how many are you able to bring back with this um, project? Approximately 25 to 30 percent. At the end of their first day of takeout orders, sales are a fraction of what Erling and Josh had hoped for. Only 86 meals sold. Seeing like a lower than expected turnout on this first night, uh, it's a little bit nerve wracking. The restaurant doesn't start getting some oxygen, right? It, it, it could get pretty dire here in the next couple weeks. The National Bureau of Economic Research states that restaurants have only a 30% chance of survival if this crisis lasts for more than four months. What do you make of that? I think it's spot on. And I actually think we have less time to address the issues. I would really put it at a four week decision period. Camilla Marcus owns Westbourne, a sustainable community-based restaurant in New York City. Her restaurant now closed. She fears it may never come back. She, along with other members of the Independent Restaurant Coalition, have become advocates, arguing that the restaurant industry is so crucial for economic recovery that it deserves its own bailout. The IRC is asking for $120 billion specifically for our industries. We are working at all levels of the Hill with every single state that is critical. From New York City all the way to the Lone Star State. This Waffle House just outside Houston has just reopened its doors to dine-in customers. I'd rather sit down and eat, actually. You know what I mean? To take it home. It's boring. <laughs> it's the Waffle House. It's the Waffle House. You don't need a reason. 
The beloved chain has a reputation for keeping its griddles hot, even during the worst of times. We've always been essential workers. In hurricanes, natural disasters, ice storms, snowstorms, we've always been here. FEMA even uses the restaurants as an indicator for how dire circumstances are, the so-called Waffle House Index. Manager Chachi Torres has been here for 20 years. If we close the Waffle House down, it means it's pretty bad. The chain closed nearly 700 restaurants while keeping about 1,250 locations, like this one, open. Hash browns and white toast, okay? Offering to-go orders. Waffle House people are very resilient. So we come up with ways. We have sold groceries within a restaurant. Torres says health and safety is the priority. We sanitize door handles. We sanitize each hour the tabletops. Every other booth is blocked off for social distancing. This is a touchless menu that each customer can use as they are visiting our restaurant. For customers like Gloria, these measures bring her confidence. It's very important for me. Not only am I immunosuppressed, but I just recently had uh, surgery. So I'm, I'm like 10 days post-surgery. Meanwhile, in Las Vegas, a city whose future relies on people going out, Deidre Young also wonders if restaurants can adapt on a large scale. To stay healthy and safe um, when, we, when servers do go back to work is going to be very, very hard. We get everybody from everywhere. The mother of three is a waitress and bartender at an Irish pub on the Strip. Serving is an amazing job. My mom has been a server all her life, too. And I said, I want to be just like my mom. But on St. Patrick's Day, her pub closed, and she's been laid off ever since. The pub eventually reopened for takeout, but didn't need her at the bar. She was able to file for unemployment, and her husband still works his construction job on reduced hours. But it's going to be tough if she's not working by the summer. Unemployment itself runs out, I want to say, at the end of June. We kind of do live paycheck to paycheck. We use the whole stimulus check on the house. If you didn't have us, we wouldn't have the Las Vegas Strip. We are the light of Las Vegas. We are what keeps it going. It's said that a good restaurant will not only feed your body, it'll nourish your soul. One of our best customers over here. I love this place. You know, one of our slogans is, come and experience our philoxenia. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? Are you okay? So anybody that comes in, we welcome them. You, we were literally friends to strangers. Last month, there were no strangers to make friends with here at Portofino's. 60, 70 percent was lost just overnight when the dining room was shut down. And we went straight to deliveries and takeout and curbside. So it wasn't easy, but we adjusted. Tony Giannarakis and Antonio Zakas own this local Greek-Italian eatery. They received a little over $100,000 from the Paycheck Protection Program, which has helped. Last week, they were allowed to go back to full service, and they're off to a pretty good start. I can tell we are maybe now 85%, so we're doing very good. Tennessee is allowing restaurants to reopen at 50% dining capacity. With tables spread at least six feet apart and no more than six guests per table. Most of the stuff we've already been doing. Masks are not required for customers, but the state has set a few best practices for restaurants, starting right when the patrons walk in. Hello, how are you doing? All right, doing good. Oh, good. Have you uh, been exposed to COVID-19? No, sir. Have you had any symptoms? No, sir. Have you had a fever in the past 48 hours? No. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Tony asked 10 of his servers to return, but only three said yes. For Roxy Sandage, the decision to come back was a no-brainer. I got a family. I got a 78-year-old mother and a senior in high school, so my bills go on. Parts of her job have changed, that bright smile hidden behind a mask. But she feels a love from her regulars all the same. The tips have been substantially better. People realize I've never seen happier, more appreciative customers in my life. And I've done this for 38 years. So. Although Portofino's is up and running, its buffet-style sister restaurant will not be reopening. We'll be back. We'll be back. Despite that loss, both Tony and Antonio remain confident with their decision, offering this advice. 
Don't give up. Especially if you love what you're doing, it will come back and it'll come back stronger. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.